and will be in discussion with uh, the IFP's uh, Umkulego Sengwa shortly about this particular matter. So stay tuned. All right, Sakina, let's get into that conversation right now. In fact, as you said, the uh, Department of Energy yesterday announced an urgent price intervention to cushion motorists. The 4.9 cent per litre is far less than what was expected. The department said despite the fact that these increases were caused mainly by international factors, the department has decided to intervene temporarily and implement a once-off temporary intervention for this month. This year alone, South Africa has seen six fuel increases. In the back of that, in July, the IFP wrote to Parliament seeking an urgent debate on the matter. The party believes that the government can find an alternative way to subsidise the increase. So for more on this, let's uh, chat to IFP Member of Parliament, Nkoleko Hlengwa. He's in our parliamentary studios. Good to have you. Thanks so much for coming in, Nkoleko. An absolute pleasure, Leanne. Good morning to you and the viewers. So out of yesterday's announcement, we saw that, let's just round it off to five cents a litre. Um, I, I, I'm nervous to say it's a welcome relief because we were meant to see it being a lot more. But having said that, we're still seeing an increase coming. Um, what do you think it means that our government can mitigate these increases? I mean, going forward, can they continue to do this? Well, it's not sustainable because, quite frankly, the announcement yesterday is laughable and is an insult to South Africans because we are still fundamentally finding ourselves on the face of an increase in the first place. And secondly, this relief is once off. Mm. And so whatever happens um, in October and November moving forward, obviously there will be no intervention there. What we have said to government is that we recognize the fact that they are not in control of global prices. So that's a separate matter. But in the 16 rands that South Africans are paying for every litre, give or take 5 rands 30 of that is a levy or a tax which government charges. It's of course broken up. There's a general levy, there's a road accident fund levy, and then there's other small levies. Now we are saying to government, you are in control of that particular aspect of the petrol price. Yeah. And under the current circumstances, it is not sustainable to continue charging taxes in the face of struggle, poverty, um, and the current conditions are not conducive for it just to continue charging. So we are saying suspend the fuel levies, readjust yeah. the budget, so that you can then offset whatever may be lost to the budget um, through that adjustment. Why we wrote to the speaker was because Parliament is the final authority on the budget. It is Parliament that passes the budget. So we were saying, let us set into motion a process of a budget review, which would say, how do we offset what has been lost, whilst government finds um, alternative means of cautioning um, what is currently um, impacting on South Africans. As you correctly said, Leanne, there have been six um, increases this year. On top of that, there's a VAT increase and a fuel levy increase of 52 cents, which was effected um, in April this yeah. year. Yeah. So you can see that month on month, South Africans have slowly but surely been sliding into further petrol price increases and struggle. And that is why we found the Speaker's decision not to grant the parliamentary debate to be irrational, reckless and irresponsible. So if we look at where the money is coming from this time, um, you know, government are saying that they're going to absorb the costs. But can I ask you, where is this coming from? And at the end of the day, aren't we as taxpayers actually the ones absorbing it, not necessarily government, because they get their money from us. So where is this money coming from? That's why I said, Leanne, it's just laughable that yeah. government would say um, that they are going to absorb this cost. Government's got no money. It's people's money. And we are saying we understand the socioeconomic conditions of the country currently, but let's reconfigure the budget. There can be cuts. Um, cut the fat, belt tighten. Just last week, I put it to the deputy president to say to him, what is it that is government is going to do to cut its own costs? Because we are saying to South Africans, South Africans, you must um, weather the storm, tighten your belts, um, relook at your um, household budgets and so on. And none of that is happening. The VAT commission, um, which came out with a flivorous um, and laughable report in terms of what would be added to the VAT-free list, did not add 
add things which were at the core face um, of the daily lives of South Africans. They're speaking about school uniforms. Nobody buys school uniforms week on week, month on month. It's probably something you buy in January and probably will go back to in June just to make sure that um, your child's uniform is still in order. So if you look at what has been presented, it does not speak to the daily realities of our people. Consumers are un- un- unable to go to, I mean, communities are unable to go to work because the taxi industry is pushing their prices up. So on all sides, South Africans are in a corner. And the solution is very simple. Let us see Parliament take its role as the representative of the people and for the first time, for goodness sake, actually get some work done. Yeah, There's yeah. nothing stopping Parliament from sitting down and re-looking at the budget and forcing cuts on behalf of the people. And that would mean, Leanne, we've got the highest number of foreign missions in the world. Let us say, let's cut down on those missions. We've got a big cabinet. President Raposa must put his money where his mouth is and see him effectively taking steps to cut down on government um, and cabinet. So we are speaking about rationalizing some of the spending so that you can, for the first time, actually say government will practically um, cut the costs of its own work as opposed to this ruse of saying government will um, take the cost, whereas we fundamentally know that either that money will come from the um, reserve um, fund of the country, which is effectively taxpayers' money. So okay. government would have done absolutely nothing. To, to assist. Um, Kuleko, just very quickly, recently there were also talks of the government's intentions to engage OPEC on this matter. Uh, can you expand on this? I mean, what are, what are the chances that this will actually be successful for us? Well, there's no harm in trying, but um, there's been really no political and practical on the part of government um, in this regard. And the president has obfuscated on many instances. The deputy president has run away. The minister of energy has not been forthcoming. So the people who are charged with the responsibility of dealing with this matter have not been truthful or honest. And today I'm sending another letter to the speaker demanding another debate because we've just come back from a recess of three months and parliament is only in session for four weeks. We're going on recess next week again. And so she knew fundamentally when she said to us um, no to the debate that we'll be coming back for a short period of time. So on all fronts, the people who have been charged with the responsibility of actually taking decisive action and decisive decisions in this regard have not done so. So the intention to um, engage OPEC um, is all good and well, but that's a long-term intervention. What we are saying is the struggle is prevalent today and mm. those are the kind of interventions that we want so we need to stagger our approach um, short term medium term and long term so that we can actually effect maximum relief for South Africans and government must present a comprehensive relief package for South Africans in this regard because the once off intervention obviously means that next month the petrol price is going to go up and shoot through the roof again because there would fit fundamentally be no plan Um, as opposed to this knee-jerk reaction. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you for talking to us uh, on this matter. And it's a big matter that is just not going away. Mkuleko Klengwa from our parliamentary studios. He is an IFP member in Parliament discussing that petrol price increase and trying to find alternative ways of subsidising these fuel increases.